For the specialties that use clinical neurophysiological services, the numbers we produce in reports can be daunting and data interpretation is often perceived as a dark art. However, whilst technical expertise is necessary in performing these tests, interpretation is usually fairly straightforward if you follow a few simple rules. My name is Simon and I'm a consultant in clinical neurophysiology. Welcome to my channel. With this video, I will kickstart a series where I'll take you through some hypothetical cases and show you how the numbers translate into a diagnosis. I hope you'll find this as interesting and fascinating as I do and enhance your knowledge and understanding of our specialty. To begin with a caveat emptor regarding the whole concept of normative data. The definition of normal is hypothetical because it is difficult to provide lookup tables to account for all the known variables we are currently aware of, for example age, height, limb circumference, to name but a few. Additionally, all patients are in unique individuals and what may be normal for one patient may not be normal for another. So unless you have pre-existing data for a given patient, you'll need to be able to rely on your neurophysiologist to have a good idea of what numbers they were chasing at the time. Thus, second guessing a conclusion is not a good idea if you weren't there at the time of the study. Having said that, here is an easy way to remember some important numbers which work. Whilst they may not be absolutes, these could easily be applied for many scenarios and revolve around the number 5. These may not directly compare with some of the numbers in the literature, but these are for illustrative purposes only, and it's better to have something to remember as ballpark figures than none at all. So here are some minimum numbers for an average sized person at the age of 40 and as a good rule of thumb, amplitude halves as age doubles. Let's start with the sensory values, they're quite simple. In the hand we routinely measure ulnar, median and radial sensory responses. These nerves should be in a sending order 5, 10 and 15 microvolts in amplitude. A microvolt is tiny, it's a millionth of a volt. At the age of 20, these should be double that, so the ulna, median and radial responses should be at least around 10, 20 and 30 microvolts respectively. By the age of 80, these could be halved to 2.5, 5 and 7.5 microvolts respectively. Velocity should be at least 55 meters per second at the age of 20, 50 at the age of 45 and 40 by the age of 80. In the feet, we tend to routinely measure the sural and superficial perineal sensory nerve responses. Minimum amplitudes at the age of 40 are 10 and 5 microvolts respectively. At the age of 20, these should be double that, so 20 and 10 microvolts. And at the age of 80, you could halve these to 5 and 2.5 and microvolts respectively. Because the feet are quite distal, temperatures are lower than in the hand, and so the velocities are always slower than in the hands. This almost never really matters as long as they are above 40 meters per second at 40 and 35 meters per second at the age of 80. So to recap, for an average 40 year old, we would expect the following sensory responses. These would cover the absolute numbers. We also have a relative rule, which is that the amplitudes of a nerve response from one side should not be more than 50% different to the corresponding response on the other side. Let's go through the standard motor responses that we record. The first number we record is the distal motor latency, or DML for short. Unlike the sensory equivalent, which is a simple velocity, this is much harder to calculate, as it accounts for multiple processes. It represents the time taken for the electrical impulse stimulating the muscle to travel from the point of stimulation to the motor point, then the time it takes for acetylcholine to be released across the synaptic cleft, and then for the muscle membrane to depolarize, causing the contraction. Because any of these can vary, we stick to the absolute time. This is measured in milliseconds, which are thousandths of a second. However, we can more easily quantify the conduction velocities of the intermediate and more proximal nerve segments if we subtract the distal segment latency and calculate the speed afterwards. As a rule, the more proximal we test, the wider the caliber the nerve becomes and the warmer it becomes. Hence, the conduction velocities should always increase the more proximal we test. In the forearm, these should again be 
over 50 at the age of 40 and can decrease a little with age to around 45 at the age of 80 or so. Motor amplitudes are measured in millivolts, which are thousandth of a volt, and so are 1,000 times larger than the sensory responses. These often reflect more than the muscle fibre activation of the muscle being tested itself. This is particularly the case for the ulna ADM and the tibial AH muscles, where there is an antenna effect. Those studies can capture responses from all the ulna or all tibial innervated muscles respectively, and so the amplitudes are often disproportionately large to the actual size of the muscle in question. In addition, patients with small hands or feet will have smaller overall amplitudes, but again it's easier to remember some numbers than none at all. So here are some latency values for a typical 40 year old, and these are 3.5, 4.5, 5.5 and 6.5 milliseconds for the ulnar ADM, median APB, perineal EDB, and tibial AH motor responses, respectively. Unlike sensory values, it's much harder to provide minimal amplitudes. Personally, I would recommend that we consider the average size response, which could be 5 millivolts for the median APB, 10 millivolts for the ulnar ADM, 2.5 millivolts for the perineal EDB, and 5 millivolts for the tibial AH. By 80, these could all easily be halved, but the age of 20 could be around one and a half times the size. Any significant deviation from these or asymmetries could indicate a problem. The final numbers to mention are the F-wave responses. In the upper limb, for a person of average height, these should be less than 33 milliseconds, and in the lower limbs, these should be less than 55 milliseconds. So, to recap, here is a summary of some of the data we would expect. And whilst these cannot be perfect, and you shouldn't use them for making absolute diagnoses, these are roughly in the ballpark of what we would expect at varying ages. In the next video, I'll explain how we interpret the data, and then I'll commence a series of videos with some worked examples using these values. Thank you for watching, and I hope this has been useful. Please do support this channel by liking, sharing, and subscribing. Thank you for your support, and I hope to see you in the next video.